Robotics, and today we have another instructional video from Will at Studio Zombie 3D. Today, Will teaches us how to install OctoPrint on an old Android phone. This is an alternative method to those using a Raspberry Pi, and it may be easier to set up for some of you. We hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and to ring the bell for notifications on new videos. Hey everybody, Will with Studio Zombie 3D here. OctoPrint is one of the most popular add-ons for 3D printing. Today we're going to take a look at a new option for people who don't have a Raspberry Pi. Octo 4A. OctoPrint on an Android phone. A lot of people have them laying around, so let's take a look at this system now. Alright, you're going to need a good hub with charging and USB for connecting to the printer. Today. I'm going to be using my old P30 Pro for this. Alright, let's jump over to the Android phone now and get this installed. Alright, the first thing we're going to do over on our phone is going to go over to the Octo4A website. I'll have a link in the description below. Download the APK from the Release tab. Once it's finished with downloading, make sure to install. You may need to enable Install from Unknown Sources for it to work. Once it's finished, Open the app and we'll install OctoPrint. Be sure to click allow to use the storage. You can enable anonymous usage tracking if you like. This step will take several minutes as it installs the bootstrap, downloads and installs OctoPrint and the dependencies. Alright, once that's finished installing, we will relaunch the app and finish the configuration on the phone side. Disable all the battery optimization so nothing gets turned off during prints. Be sure to click on Allow. Next, we're going to click on the Settings tab. We're also going to click on Allow so we can use the camera. You can install the plugins here, although I don't know what they really do. Also, choose which camera you're going to use for your camera on the back, and then set your resolution and frame rate. I tend to use the 5 between 15 FPS, and that seems to work really well for me. Alright, now that we're done on the phone, we're going to jump over to the laptop and finish the configuration of OctoPrint, making sure that our camera is working. And here we are with our phone all set up and ready to go with my Anycubic Viper. The hub is attached, plugged into power, OctoPrint is running, and the USB is connected to the printer. Now we're going to jump over to the laptop and finish up our setup. Over on our laptop, we're going to go to the address provided on the Pi screen on OctoPrint on Android. First, we're going to go through the setup wizard. Click Next. If you have a backup, you can restore, but I tend not to myself. Then we're going to make a username and password for the system. Click Create Account. Next, we're going to click on Next and enable the online connectivity check. Then we hit Next. I also like to enable anonymous usage tracking. Click Next, and then we're going to enable Plugin Blacklist. Finally, we're going to enable and set up our printer on OctoPrint. 
For me, I'm using my Anycubic Viper. So we'll change the name and the brand. Zombie Viper for my printer and an Anycubic Viper for the brand. Then we're going to set our build play dimensions. For my Viper, it's a square bed with the measurements of 250 by 255 by 265. The rest of the options are pretty standard and don't change. Same with axes, nothing needs to be changed as well as hot end and extruder. Only change it if you have changed your nozzle. The last two tabs we just click next and finish. Once we're done, this will take us back to the main screen of Octoprint. Now we can move on to installing a couple of plugins. I won't go over this too much in depth as I already have a video for the Octoprint setup that you can check out and see which plugins I like to use. The one main one I like to install first is UI Customizer. This just lets you change the theme of Octoprint itself and I find it's handy. The next handy plugin I like to install is the dashboard plugin. So we'll install this quickly now as well. Now we're going to close out of this and go back to the main screen. Again, check out my other Octoprint video for my suggested plugins. Next thing we're going to do is look at loading an STL. Click on upload and then find your file and then click open. It'll take a minute for it to upload, and once done, you'll see it in the file list. There we are. Now we can connect to the printer and start our print. And as always, make sure your printer is nice and level before you're starting a print. Once we have it loaded, we're just going to click on the file name in the list, and it will show up in the bottom here. Click on preheat, start preheating the printer, and it'll start printing. Alright, there we go. Now we'll wait a few minutes and check out the results. Oh, and here we are, partway through our print. Everything's looking pretty good now. Everything's all hooked up. Phone's staying charged. Everything's looking good. We'll come back in a few more minutes and check it and see what it looks like when it's finished. Alright, here we are 25 minutes later, pull it off the bed, take a look. This is 4 year old PETG by the way. I didn't think it would print at all, but it actually printed better than I thought it would. Goes to show, proper storage always helps when you're storing your filament. Alright everybody, that was it for the video on setting up Octoprint for Android. Alright, that was just a quick video on Octoprint on Android everybody. Remember this is still in development, so there might be a few bugs here and there. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and check out our Instagram to see what's going on with the studio. Also remember to check out our new channel partner, GL Robotics, for all your 3D printing needs in the U.S. Thanks for watching everybody, take care and we'll see you all in the next video.